Almost 20 years ago, I began my travels around the world, exploring the most remote and hidden corners of the planet. On different continents, I have seen the power and might of nature many times. Tropical showers. It's raining! It's starting to rain! The show is over! Floods. A landslide. Oh my god! It's all mud! It's a swamp that you can sink into completely! Earthquakes. It was shaking very hard. The walls were shaking. Everything on the table was shaking. Large-scale volcanic eruptions. Unbelievable! Another explosion! The column of smoke is rising to a height of 3.5 kilometers. It's fantastic! Look at it! In my travels, I have encountered what is called the effects of global warming. Jellyfish began to flood the world's oceans. It's somehow connected with global warming. I'm diving in. Here are 10 tons of jellyfish, and I am practically swimming in this jellyfish. But for the last almost two years, I haven't traveled abroad, and I've been documenting events exclusively in Ukraine, and it's now just the war. The first one go, one, two, three and the life during the war. But we will survive. And also acts of nature and phenomena in Ukraine, which you will be very interested to know about. The World Inside Out with Dmitry Kalmarov, Ukraine. Hazardous industries, landfills, car exhaust, deforestation, all of these cause huge emissions of so-called greenhouse gases into the atmosphere. These gases form an invisible barrier that delays the sun's rays near the Earth. The planet seems to turn into a huge greenhouse. Temperatures are rising, glaciers are melting. As a result, the climate is changing. Nowadays, nature is increasingly destroying and creating at the same time, sometimes creating real phenomena. For example, in Ukraine, for the first time in the history of observations, a birth of a flamingo was officially recorded in Odessa region. Friends, we are in a unique place. These are the Tuzla estuaries, a group of salt lagoons in Ukrainian Bessarabia, not far from Odessa. Today it is a huge transit zone for migratory birds. Every year more than a million birds stop here to rest during their exhausting intercontinental journey. This place is called the maternity hospital of the Black Sea because it has a unique ecosystem and a lot of marine life. This name can have another meaning that is very apt. Today we'll see a unique phenomenon here. Pink flamingos born in Ukraine. Just here. It is here that they will be ringed for the first time. The pink flamingo is considered one of the most beautiful birds on the planet. It's also one of the oldest. The ancestors of modern flamingos inhabited our planet as long as 30 million years ago. Hello? Ivan Rusiev, I am the head of the scientific department of the Tuzla Estuaries National Park. This is the first year in our history that so many flamingos have arrived. 570 adult flamingos and 192 chicks. Your profession is bird watch. Isn't it a dream job? It was my dream job. A person looks at birds at the sea all day long and they get paid for it. I look at birds in the sea and through them I learn about the environment. By the way, the famous bird's milk really exists. Flamingo milk is produced in its crop, a part of its throat, and then combs out through its beak. Both males and females can produce it. It won't be interesting to hear from a professional in very simple language what surprises you the most about bird behavior and what a person can learn from a bird. Birds are such an absolute balance in sensing the environment. If you see them in the area, it's a good sign that everything is fine in nature. What kind of flamingos is it and where do they usually stay? They are pink flamingos. In Africa, in the Mediterranean, in Central Asia, in Kazakhstan, they live in this large area. Our northern population will migrate. They will stay here until November. Then they will fly away. 
The researchers are happy. Flamingos have never hatched chicks in Ukraine before. And when the birds decided to spend the summer in Odessa region, everyone was very worried that the war and the shelling would prevent the miracle from happening. When they were nesting, it was very dangerous here. Drones and fighter jets were flying at night and during the day, and this factor of disturbance did not allow them to nest normally. But they hatched 192 chicks last year when they appeared for the first time there were also flocks, but there was a very heavy load on Zmaini Island. When the island was deoccupied, it was very dangerous. This year they nested more peacefully. What is the current situation? Now the flamingos are calmly waiting on the coast of the Ali Bay estuary. Can I have a look? Sure. There is a big group of flamingos. There are adults and little ones. Is there a hundred of it? Yes. Or more than that. There are about hundred in sight, but there are more to the right and left. We're now about three kilometers away from the flamingos. There are more than 500 large flamingos and 192 babies in the distance. It's they who need to be caught and ringed today. I had a unique opportunity to work in a team of herders, those who drive the birds. At first, the flamingos were guided to the shore by kayaking. Now it's our task to surround the chicks and, under the strict guidance of the coordinator, to direct them to a specially created fence. From there, the little flamingos will be taken for ringing. This is the first time in my life I worked as a flamingo herder. You can see that there's a lot of salt and similar foam we saw in the curve region on the Pink Lakes. We have our own Dead Sea right next door in our native Kherson region. This is an incredible foam. Now we need to see where the flamingos are and go straight to it. Dimitro, can you hear me? Yes, the commander is in charge of the process. I'm listening carefully. Dimitro, we need to go left. Go left. Go left. Okay, I understand. I'm going left. It may seem like some kind of entertainment, but in fact everything has its own meaning and it's very important. The chick reacts to the person and changes its trajectory. By shifting left and right, I can direct the little birds in the right direction. Here we go. They stop it. And now the flamingos will come running to us. No, it seems that the feather babies do not quite understand what people want from them. I wonder if we will able to capture at least one chick. That's funny. Oops, he tried to escape. Ringing is a special procedure during which a special mark is put on the chick's legs. This mark allows researchers to remotely collect information about the birds' lives, migration, mortality, nutrition and diseases, without disturbing it. Thus, ringing is beneficial for birds. The flamingo babies seem to have other plans and are trying to escape. This is a cool experience and we are trying to catch it. Here comes the gate. Of course, the birds are a little stressed now, but it's all for their own good. Hey! <laughs> Did you catch it? Yeah. I got it. Come on, come on. It's small. They let me hold it, carefully, so as not to damage it, God forbid. I don't even know how to hold it. Baby, a real pink flamingo in Ukraine. The heart is beating. Right now the chicks looks like ugly ducklings, that is grey, but later their feathers will start to turn pink like their parents, and all thanks to the food. The bird has its bright color because it likes to eat crayfish, which contain the red pigment, carotenoid. It's an amazing feeling to see such a real life now during the war. Let me carry the stick. Hold the stick. 
because I was asked to hold it already. The legs are fragile, I don't touch the legs, I just hold it from above. It's hard even to describe to you how I feel now. I remember the main rule. When you hold a bird, hold it so gently as not to damage it, but so firmly as not to let go at the same time. And now they're entering the gate. There are less than a hundred of them here. We couldn't catch all of them, but we caught enough. Come on, run to your friends. It's fantastic. And now we just ask chicks to go inside. Easy, easy. There's a breakthrough. Here, friends, we're just a few steps away from this small victory. They're bringing another one in. That's it, the gate is closing. And here you see, at first, there were three lying down, and one has already gotten up, because they were just scared, and now they're showing stress in this way. They're fine, they're safe, but they're very small, by the way. What is their average age? There are several groups here. The smallest ones are 40 days old, and the largest ones are 60 days old. We'll win the bigger ones. You see, it recovered too. That's it. No one else is lying down. One might have thought that they were injured. No, they're just tired. But the birds will rest later, because now is the most important moment. We are finally starting the ringing. Now each bird will get its own number. Let's do it together. Yes, this is a significant event for the whole of Ukraine. We hope that they will be in all European countries. Here, this beautiful one will be the first. Yes, bring it over here. What a beauty. We call it Victory. Right, I wanted to suggest a name. Yes, the name is Victory. Careful. Here we go. Let's do it together. Let's do it safely, securely. Wow! It's incredible feeling when such beauty, such tenderness bites you so lightly, looks at you. And here is the first number. Let's capture it. Let's take it there. Help me. Let's do it together. Open it up and put it on its shin with the letters up. Letters up. Gently. Let it go. I'm holding it with my fingers and let go. So as not to hurt it, not to injure it. Carefully. Here we go. It's done beautifully. Congratulations on our first flamingo. I congratulate you. This is your work. Glory to Ukraine. Glory to the heroes. After the ringing, the specialists must measure each bird, weight it and register it. The first flamingo Ukrainian. Name Victory. Age 50 days. From the point of view of science, from the point of view of our national parks and reserves, what does the event mean? How significant is it? National parks are the national heritage of the Ukrainian people. They are very important for the future, for the biosphere as a whole. And if there are flamingos in a national park, it means that the area is protected. There is enough food, the ecological system is in balance, it lives normally, and it means that we have a future. A living ecological system is is a guarantee of well-being for the people who live here and the stability of the ecological system where we live, the biosphere as a whole. So, are we opening it? Come on. Come on. Here you see, friends. They ran. Birds are considered sacred creatures by many peoples 
of the world. Therefore, today, when the war in Ukraine is ongoing, the historic first birth of pink flamingos in Ukraine and our Black Sea region can be considered a good sign. Although, for our latitudes, this is a real curiosity, and I must say, not the only one. 2023 broke dozens of temperature records, and it's likely to be the warmest year on record. And it was this year that not only flamingos were born in Ukraine, but also one of the largest spring floods occurred. This is a river flood that usually occurs every year where the snow melts. Last winter, however, there was little precipitation in Ukraine, and large amounts of water flooded as many as eight regions. This place where I'm standing now is an ordinary road between two villages, and we can see a bagoon, an all-terrain vehicle, a swamp vehicle coming along. And look around, it's such a large area, it seems like we're somewhere in the Amazon region. We saw very similar landscapes in Brazil. When the river floods, and it's maximum during the rainy season, it can be up to 35 kilometers wide. This happens in some places. That is naturally, it flows not only along the channel, but also through the jungle, flooding the surrounded forests. This happens here too. In general, a flood is common nature phenomenon of a river after it rains or melts snow, they flood and overflow their banks. Only from time to time it's on a very large scale. In the spring of 2023, the regions of Dnipro, Zaporizhia, Kiev, Kirovograd, Kherson, Poltava, Cherkasy, and Chernihiv suffered from water overflows. Our first stop is Chernihiv region. We are approaching the border with Belarus. And here is the penultimate village, it's called Redul. People leave their cars here and continue to drive, I assume, in a tractor or some kind of jeep. Let's ask them. Good afternoon. Hello. What's your name, please? Mikhailo. You'll take the bread to the store. Yes. A car has just come from the district, and we will take this bread to the stores, because we can't get there otherwise. So we'll have to take a tractor. Will the car pass? If you take it slowly with a little boost, the main thing is not to get water. Let's go and see. It will work or not, we'll see. The tractor is already in the water. Now we're going to drive a little bit. I'll see what's going on with the level. Dimitro, there's a water in the cabin. Water in the cabin. Should we go back? I'm sorry. Can I get some help? Hi. I just want to turn the car around so I don't destroy it. Could you come here so I can check the water level? I don't see his knee. I can't drive here. No, I can't drive there. We need to go back. It's deep there, is it? Drive it back. It will come back for you, the tractor. This was the lowest water here. I could already see that a little further and I would get water. There's a puddle in the cabin, unfortunately. I will continue on the tractor, right? I'll change my clothes then. I'm turning around and coming over. Good. We need to put on our waders like fishermen, and that will continue. Our team is ready to shoot. That's it. We're switching from a cool jeep to a tractor. As in a joke, the cooler the jeep, the farther you have to go to get the tractor. The tractor is ready. Here's where we couldn't drive the jeep anymore. Good afternoon. I saw the rescuers all terrain wickle and asked to be dropped off to them because I think they can show us the most interesting things. You see, an ordinary village, a tractor driving on the water, and a boat floating, a sherp, an all terrain wickle stays still.
Hello. Can I come in? Yes, we are going to Novosilki. As far as I know, Novosilki is the last village before Belarus. Will you show us? Sure, come with us. Thank you. Where can we sit? We'll go for a ride on the Sharp. A Bagoon. Is it the same as the Sharp or different? It's made on its base. Shall we go? Let's go. This is called a Bagoon. It's all-terrain vehicle that can go to any depth and it can even swim. It's the perfect vehicle for a rescuer. All the streets just turned into rivers. The distance from the village of Redul to Novosolke is almost 6 kilometers, and by car you can reach your destination in 20 minutes, but only if the road is dry. In the current circumstances, we had to travel for more than an hour. This is an old lady. Good afternoon! Hello! Do you need any help? Food? Bread. Good afternoon. Hello. What's your name, please? Olha. Olha. How are you doing? Little by little. A little by little. Was your house flooded? No. Is everything okay? Does it end here? Under the bridge there was water. Can I see it? Oh, you're doing well. You have such a shed here, and the house is safely hidden. And you built it on a purpose to keep the house away from the street, right? My late father did that. So he realized that there could be such a water flood. It happened a lot in the year 70. I'm wearing boots. When the water was so high, my nephew bought me a pair of boots and brought them to me. I'm sorry, I hear you have a little bit of Belarusian accent, right? Yes. You can feel it. Yes. That's how we used to travel from Novosilki to Belarus. T no longer communicate with Belarusian. No. Belarus is literally across the river here. What do you think? A few days here and everything will be fine. Everything is already fine. Thank you very much. Aren't you Dmitro? Dmitro who? I forgot. The one who's driving around and talking. Driving around and talking. That's him. Thank you. I'm very flattered that you're watching my show. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. How are you doing? Not very good. We can't even get to Redul. No. Do you survive thanks to your boat? Yes. Do you need any food? We have some here. Okay. Come on. Coffee? Tea? Coffee, please. Some coffee, some tea. Thank you. How much do I owe you? You owe me a smile. Here is some rice. Take it home. Take some canned food. Will you come again? Hopefully by bus. Yes, I'm here to help my sister. Where is your sister? There she is. She's there, yes. We were just talking to her. Well, I came all the way from Kiev. So you came from Kiev on purpose? Yes. Let me give you a push. This is how people get around. You can swim right into the yard. Open the gate. Open the gate. You see, your brother has come to you. This is how people live. You see what's going on in the garden. And did you see what is the cellar? Here, look. The cellar is flooded. More than a meter and a half. This was the water level in the village of Novoselke in the first days of this year's flood. It's really affected people. However, they're simply amazing with their irresistible optimism. I'll give you a treat. You see what kind of people they are. We came and asked how we could help, and they say, wait a minute, they run home and say, here's some local fish for you. Yes, from the garden. Did you catch it here? In the garden. In the garden. When? 
two or three days ago. So it's a legendary fish, so to speak, caught during the flood, yes. It's interesting. We're wondering what the people those houses were flooded are doing. We think they they're surviving somehow. Now they catch fish and dry it. I went and bathed in the refreshing water. What can I say? Don't watch the news. Watch the world inside out. Hear the truth. The news says it's bad, and people say that we are fishing, swimming, and everything is fine. Thank you very much. You too. You have a good day. And you too. I live to be a hundred. I just went to visit and left. And by the way, it seems to me that the water is living step by step. Yes, we stayed at home for about 20 minutes, and it seems to me that the wheels are a little less flooded. Okay, so we're moving on. As the water is leaving and arriving very quickly, it's difficult to say when the flood will end. So while the residents are in the water captivity, they can get the most necessary things only from the SES. Here it flooded too. Canned food is floating. What should I tell you? What? You tell us, we'll bring it. You see, this is a very simple help people need. Don't you have any relatives? No? For bread? Yes, for medicine, for food, for help, for help. So, you see, the SES goes to the nearest point where there is a civilization. The cars can get there and returns. They will stay here. A stork! While traveling through the flooded village, I noticed that almost all the houses are built on hills, you could say on islands. The people are also experienced, and no one walks on foot like me. You walk down the street and a man on a boat comes towards you. Hello. Hello. How are you doing? Is everything okay? Still optimistic? Yes. My name is Mitro. I'm Alexander. Nice to meet you. Where are you going? To look at what's going on here. What's going on? People are waiting. What are they waiting for? To meet you. To meet me? I see you have a homemade boat. It's just a tire. Two boards, and that's it. Can I try it? Sit down. It's flipping over. I can see. You have to be careful. Not push it too hard. Yes, you have to keep the balance. Yes, firstly balance. Ouch. That's just to make it easier. Inventive people have figured out what to do when their village is flooded. I can take you there. Okay. Hold me up. I'm about to roll over. I didn't expect this. This deep. Is it easy? I'll get my phone out, or it will get wet. Well, if you have an assistant like you, it's more convenient. Oops. I've come to see you. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. How are you? Just like that. We couldn't believe it, Camaro, no way! I am the main blogger in the village. <laughs> How is the situation here? What's going on? We're like hares on an island. Why like hares? Everything was flooded, nowhere to go, so we ran home. And the potatoes in the cellars were flooded, so we pulled them out. Everything flows, even the chickens, dogs and cats, they all float. Everyone is taken upstairs somewhere, we're used to it now. We're not afraid anymore. Well, look at that! A guy just passed by. How did you get here? 
Or the water. I saw it. The kids just so yet wanted to take a picture with you. I brought the kids here. Dad had to risk his car to take pictures for the kids. It was very risky. It was so close to the edge that the car could be lost. Meanwhile, the rescuers all train vehicle returned. Residents of Novoselka stand in line for bread, food and medicine. I am coming to you. I am the headwoman. Headwoman? Radelsk headwoman. You have brought bread to people now. I say a lot of bread. Bread, humanitarian aid. And salt and black bread. A lot of salt. Why so much? For the neighbors. For the neighbors? Yes. The SES and local officials buy these products and bring it to people directly. This is just such help. The second stop of our expedition in Cherkasy region. This is where some of the most beautiful places in Ukraine are located, which from time to time resemble the Amazon. But unlike in Brazil, where people are used to Amazon floods, in the village of Krishchatik, the flood of 2023 was a real natural disaster. Part of the village was flooded, a real rescue operation began, and the SES evacuated people and animals. But as always happens, there were people who refused to be rescued and found themselves face to face with the big water. We arrived, friends, and you won't believe it, at Krishchatik, or rather to Krishchatik. This is the village of Krishchatik. The water is literally knee deep. And now let's see how the rescuers are working and how the people who were flooded here. The water has ended down here and we're already reaching the island. Hello? Hello, may I come in? Of course, come in. We are so sorry about the flood. I'm taking everything out, drying it. Is it a tourist base here? Over there. What do you have here? We just live here. We've been here for 10 years. 10 years, and 10 years ago there was a flood. Yes, there was, but it was a small one. It doesn't count. I forgot that I'm not in the waders. Did you? Your feet are getting cold. What for? My feet are cold, my kidneys are failing. Speaking of kidneys, when we were in Chernihiv region, we spent a whole day hiking and shooting up to the waist, and I felt my kidneys too. And you have been here for a week. It's two weeks now. In the water all day long. They come to me regularly to give me injections. What do they give you? Anesthetic, anti-inflammatory and antispasmodic. Right. Welcome to the river house. A river house? The river house? Yes. The kitchen looks like this now, with barrels floating around. Full immersion. We cried for three days, came to our senses, accepted the situation and started doing something. My arms are intact, my legs are intact, my head is working. We will be able to earn money, rebuild and continue living. It is worse where there is war. It is much worse. Is this your garage? Yes, it's for bots. I apologize for the humor, but it's very convenient to have a boat garage now. It's okay, you can survive here without jokes. Here is the usual Cherkasy region. You take a kayak, get in and on the doorstep on your house and go! It's amazing, but now all her Senri and I are paddling through the streets of the village. There, there were roads, there are now kayak roads. The distance is about the same. It's fine. Dmitry is delighted. This is such a special year. In Cherkasy region, you can kayak right between the houses in the village. Today, you don't come to visit your neighbors here, you paddle. Good afternoon, can I come in? Of course, is it your house? 
Yes, this whole area. This was the lowest building, the first one to come up with water. It was just like this, the fences were broken down, you drove by, saw it all, the gates and everything went straight there, into the Dnipro. Yes, and all went into the Dnipro downstream. Neighbor, come over! Why did you tie the car up? There was a huge stream of water, so strong that it was simply knocking you off your feet. Just imagine, friends, the flow was so strong that they had to tie the car down to prevent it from floating into the Dnipro. Did you catch the fish here? Yes, I caught in the pits and I scooped it up this morning. We'll have fried fish for dinner. It's easy to stumble in dirty water, as one of our operators demonstrates. The camera! Give me a hand! The camera! Our cameraman. Good evening, sir. Good evening. Are we disturbing anything? No, it's all right. We are on duty around the clock. Could we ask you to watch your work in such a difficult time? Of course. May I? Of course. Tell us what the work is like now, when the flood is like this. In the eight years of our water petrol existence, this is the first time we have seen such a high water level and flooded like this. Our next stop is Key Region, one of those places where people are trying to tame nature. For the last half century, the Dnipro has been not just a river, but a cascade of reservoirs Kiev, Kaniv, Kremenchuk, Kamiansk, Dnipro, and the now destroyed Kikovka. This system of artificial reservoirs was created not only to generate electricity, but also to control the power of nature, to raise or lower the water level. However, this year it was too high. You see unique footage. This is the dam itself. And we see the open gateway that discharged more than 450 cubic meters of water every second. This is a huge volume. But there are many gateways, only one is open, so the situation is normal. There is a clear mathematical formula that helps to calculate how much water needs to be discharged to keep the entire system, the entire cascade of the Dnipro balanced. Now we'll try to understand how it all works. I see this very turbulent water and I'm just trying to figure it out because there are hundreds of versions, hundreds of experts and everyone says something different. Someone says it's a military plot, someone says it's the end of the world coming, a UFO, whatever they say. Is it something anomalous or ordinary this year? This is an absolute natural process, it takes place every spring. Some years there is a little more water, some years there is less. We just need to understand that every year we pass about twice. 25 cubic kilometers of water for the cascade of the Dnipro reservoirs. This year we were preparing to reserve 37 cubic kilometers of water, which is one and a half times more than in 2022. That is, instead of 25, it's 37 cubic kilometers. Friends, a cubic kilometer is a kilometer wide, a kilometer deep. That's the size of a cubic kilometer and 12 extra cubic kilometers this year, unplanned. 12 extra cubic kilometers, which is higher than the average. In total, the volume of the Kiev reservoir is about 4 cubic kilometers. That is, three extra KFCs pass through this cascade. An additional three KFCs, you are absolutely right, are now passing through the reservoir cascade. In total, we have 10 such KFCs that we have to pass this year. And if you play with zeros and do some math, one cubic kilometer is a billion cubic meters, friends. The numbers are impressive. A billion cubic meters, a billion tons, a billion tons of water. The same situation, the same volume of water was in 2013 and 1985, 86. By the way, this is my first time here and it's all very impressive. 
By the way, look, this is a hydroelectric power plant, which is one of the reasons why the Dnipro today is not a lively natural river, but a cascade of reservoirs. There is a corresponding level about it and a lower level to which the water descends. The Dnipro River does not begin its flow in the Kiev region. It starts in Russia. Then in Belarus, it's also filled with snow and rain and falls on their territory, and an additional volume of water enters the Dnipro Basin. Unfortunately, we had a very warm winter here, and the soil is now very saturated with water. And here we can simply recall the sponge that is used in the kitchen to wash dishes. If the sponge is dry and water is poured on it, some of the water will get inside the sponge. It's completely wet, then they pour new water on it and it just rolls off. This is a very clear example. When the ground absorbs water, the water stays. And if the ground is no longer able to absorb a lot of water, then the water overflows and it floods. The water will come, it will rise by half a meter, a meter, a meter and a half, and it will leave. That's why it won't stay. It's not always possible to determine whether a natural disaster is a normal natural phenomenon or a consequence of our reactions. Today, people are learning to take care of the planet. They sort garbage, develop green technologies and switch to electric cars, but this is a drop in the bucket. So nature sometimes shows people their place. This is what our next expedition proves. We are going to the Carpathian Mountains, to the place where nature always remains a full-fledged master and demonstrates its character to people. We are heading to one of the highest and most inaccessible villages in our country, Vipchina. People had to live it, now they visit their native places only once a year, and now we'll try to find out why. There is a big zil vehicle. People gather and go to the village. Hello everyone, may I join you? Yes, yeah, sure. We're glad to see you. We're glad to see you too. Get in, quick. Give me the camera, come on. Let me join you. Hello. Hello, happiness and health to you. This is how people gather and they say that there will be up to 300 people today. There is almost no free space in the back. The truck is in the only public transport that can be used to get to the height where the abandoned village is located. Officially, it's 1,240 feet above the sea level. Here's the second zeal. The second vehicle has arrived because there are so many people who want to go. Everyone pray, Lord help us, Lord help us to get there. Let's in, let's go, Godspeed. Our extreme journey begins. On the way they say a prayer. Now we're going to drive very, very steeply uphill. It will be extreme. Vipchina is cut off from civilization. Every year the only road to it becomes more and more wild and almost impassable. I sit down so as not to get in the way. This climb is only for those who like to take risk. It's a very bad road and a long way. It's still a very good road, but it's going to get worse. On the way, I heard that not only former residents of Vipchina who visit their small homeland once a year, but also Ukrainian tourists from neighboring villages were in the truck. I'm going today for the first time. I didn't know. I just saw it on the TikTok. You saw it on the TikTok? Yes. That there is such a village for one day. Just one day. You saw it in a TikTok and decided to go? Yes. The village is so famous that a woman saw it on the TikTok. We're already entering the forest, and the hill is getting steeper and steeper. It reminds me a bit of the way up to Dragobrat. That's why on its zeal and well-prepared off-road vehicles are allowed here. There is one like this behind us. There are locals with their own cars, and those who don't have a car drive by zeal like this. A real Carpathian extreme. 
Here's a real extreme road. It's a steep hill, a very narrow road. Only a Zell or all-terrain vehicle can go here. It's very steep. Everyone gets up, everyone holds on. We passed that. Here you can see, I think the camera doesn't show it. This is quite a Dakar rally. Hold on. Look, people's jeeps are so cool. They overtake even on such a slope. I think you can already guess why people left this village and moved down to the valley. Here, high in the mountains, absolutely everything depends on nature. If it rains or snows heavily, the traffic is blocked. Even experienced truck and jeep drivers who were born in the Carpathians can not always cope with such a road. It happens that such zills turn over. This happens more than once. The road is very steep and slippery, and the driver's skill is important. A mistake can be fatal. You pray because it's very steep, very scary, right? Yes. The daily extreme of the inhabitants of the Carpathians. Some people say that they do extreme sports, but here people just live like this. A horse gives way to us. People even walk. Come on, we're stuck. Here's a hill that the vehicle can't handle anymore. There are too many people, so we're getting off. Is this your vehicle? Yes. And it can't go any further. No, it can't because the road is too bad, so we're not going at all. Soaked by rain, we'll go. And this is the second attempt just with fewer people. You see, it can't make it. He didn't make it. It took the acceleration, but unfortunately did not pass. It's too steep. Now we'll have to third attempt. Here we go. It didn't work out for the third time. Most likely there will be chains on the wheels. Drivers are starting to doubt whether we'll make it through at all. It's going to be a challenge. If we won't make it through, we'll sell the car. Is it possible that you won't make it through? Yes, there was a time that we put on six chains and did not pass. The deal was not means for the Carpathians. To overcome this steep climb, they decided to reduce the number of people in the back and to take away the cargo. They loaded the food into a jeep, which would go much faster. Because again, this is a village where no one lives. There are no animals, nothing to eat or drink. There is no civilization there, there is a complete zero. We'll eat and drink what we bring. There is nothing there except for the grass, that's all. This will be our fourth attempt to overcome the climb. I decided to take a seat with a view. The best place for children is comfortable. Give us this day our daily bread. Look, look, it's moving, it's moving. There is a chance, yes. Beautiful, it passed.
it did pass. Now the truck will be pulled by a winch. We're approaching the very legendary village that is alive only once a year. There is a festive dress code here today, and there is supposed to be an embroidered shirt here today. Do you want some help? Come on. Here we are at the cemetery. This is the main reason why people come here. And they always do so on the great Christian holiday, the Council of Twelve Apostles, the day when the disciples of Christ are honored. In the last century, there was an active fall life here, but in the late 90s, the last inhabitants left the hill. People could not stand the constant competition with nature and the remoteness from the civilization. All that remained in the village of Triptina were a few old wooden houses where no one had lived for a long time and a small church. There were 120 households in this village. 120 yards. And according to this data, in the 80s, in 80s, there was a school and a club in other side, and there were 170 people who voted there. And those who voted there, those who were over 18 years old, and there were six, seven and eight children in the house, and in some families there were a dozen. There was no electricity, neither then nor now. The old people died out, and the young people went to the center. Here's a woman who was born here. When did you leave the village? You know, there were a few people. Some left, some died. And people settled here under Austrian rule. The Austrian king gave an order. Whoever works as much land as possible will get it. So just the land that you walked over was considered yours, right? Yes. That's how interesting the laws and procedures were back then. You walked around and the land was yours. The mountains is very special. The Carpathian landscapes are always impressive. This is my favorite region for vacation in Ukraine. But it's one thing to come here on a trip and another to make your life comfortable and safe for living here. And fantastic landscapes are not enough for this. I got to the point where there was only one house left, and even then I only visited, because it's impossible to live here. So you were the last one to leave? Yes, I was the last one left here. I had to leave for the valley, for the village. Humanity has learned to challenge nature. Thanks to technology, we can now live almost anywhere, change the course of rivers, and make islands. But we often test the patience of the planet with our actions, forgetting that in the face of elements, humans are actually powerless. Here in Viptina, nature took its course and drove people out of the highlands. And this is not uncommon. There are fewer and fewer such beautiful villages every year. So in the next seasons of the World Inside Out, Ukraine will go on an expedition to the highest villages of Ukraine to capture these disappearing settlements and its unique inhabitants. In the next episode, let there be light. Energy expedition of the world inside out. We're at the attitude of 125 meters. How will electricity be produced? The wind has always been there and always will be, and we need to use it. One, two, three, four. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Friends, this is what a wind farm looks like from above. It's really cool. Extreme everyday life at Ukrainian power plants. We had to survive all the impacts at the station. It was scary when the fire started. Everything was on fire. I will try out all the most difficult professions. It's dangerous because the big piece can fall here. I need a diet.
Evening. And the risky raids of the Energy Special Forces. Ready down there? This one and this through. Maina, we did it! How do those who return electricity to people every day work? Our work is, as they say, risky and dangerous. Don't miss the new episode of The World Inside Out, Ukraine. We're running to see what have I done. I need glasses, because I have tears. The World Inside Out with Dmitry Komarov, Ukraine.